Alternative Dig Talk. Real Issues. Real Talk. Gwete di church leo. Tawali man, what's up? Man, can you imagine people just dump everywhere? Someone drinks water and throws the bottle wherever. Come on, Rogers. What else do you expect people to do with an empty bottle? Simanyo na wakukoda. Do you know that plastics take at least 450 years to decompose? What? That's a long time. Exactly. Because plastics are made out of a lightweight and flexible material that doesn't decompose easily. And plastics everywhere in the environment cause plastic pollution. What is plastic pollution now? It is the accumulation of plastic waste in the environment, like bottles, polythene bags, straws, all of these contribute to plastic pollution. I have been using them without knowing their effect. Yeah, a lot of people have. Plastics are a danger to the ecosystem, both on land and in water. So how can we overcome this problem? Is there something we can do? Oh yes, we can reduce by minimizing the use of plastics, reuse by repurposing them, or recycle by collecting and processing them into new products. Everyone wants to change the world, but no one wants to change themselves for the world. How about we change our habits for the world? And And it it starts starts with with me and and you. This message is brought to you by Alternative Digitalk. The Alternative Digitalk. Real issues. Real talk. Good morning, our viewers. You're most welcome to this show. This is Tekachi airing live on Digitalk TV, Facebook page, and the Alternative Uganda. You're most welcome to this show. And your host, as always, I am Kato Tumsime. And I welcome you on this lovely show for the interesting topic that we shall be discussing. Uh, we apologize where we cannot be able to air this show, but I promise that whenever we can, shall always be available and the show will be on. We always request and tell you to always send your questions, send your concerns, your comments, and any advice that you would need to hear from us through uh, the personal Facebook account at Tumsime Kato, or you can inbox the Alternative Uganda. You can find me on Twitter at Tumsime Kato and also Alternative Yuga. Send your concerns, send your comments, and we shall be able to respond and reply as the need shall be. Uh, I want to say today we have our guest, Council Nicholas Agawa, and we shall be going through an interesting topic that is related to land matters and land transactions. I have had a number of people talk about these things, and maybe some of us, in one way or the other, we don't understand what they mean in instances where they talk about uh, the bona fide purchasers for value with notice, without notice, and so many other things in that relation. But today, Council Nicholas will be able to guide and help you understand these kind of terms as used in land transactions and what happens where a person buys or purchases property. And they call themselves the bona fide purchasers, but when they had notice or they had no notice, do we have any remedy available for both parties or council will be able to guide and we shall be able to move in that direction. If you have any comment, if you have any question in that regard, you can share it in box, make your comment and we shall be able to respond to you. I want to welcome Council Nicholas Agaba to say hello to our viewers. Introduce himself and then we can start up our show today. You're most welcome to take a Council Nicholas. Uh, pleasure. Uh, good morning, our viewers. I'm Nicholas Agaba. Like uh, my brother introduced me. Mm. Good uh, to have this show seated with my land <laughs> colleague. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Mr. Kata, I really appreciate the opportunity to share with uh, our great viewers out there. Mm. Uh, like I introduced myself, I'm Agawa Nicholas. I'm a lawyer uh, working with Soita and Company Advocates. Okay. And uh, for this particular for this particular show presentation, uh, I'll be 
much more into land transactions and particularly the principle or the sentence that has been used over and over again, the defense that has been brought up by different individuals in protecting their interests, their legal rights after transactions, and that is none other than the bona fide purchaser for value with or without oh, notice. Not notice. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you so much, Council Nicholas. And to begin with, I want you to start by explaining what we mean when we say a bona fide purchaser. Uh, maybe before I go to what we mean by a bona fide purchaser, I really want to state to our viewers that uh, lately transactions, especially land transactions, have increased and several trends are coming up. Uh, you'll notice that uh, from the time we started, from since time immemorial, land has become a greatest asset in this world. <coughs> and due to that, everyone everywhere wants to acquire a piece of land, laws governing land transactions and everything change day in and day out. Mm. And with that evolution, several things come in. So um, as they develop, new principles are set, new guidelines are brought in to make sure that uh, uh, the purchasers and so are the other parties in whichever contract and whichever discussion pertaining the land are protected. So to protect them, several things are brought up to give them that kind of protection legally. Okay. Now I'll go to what you said, uh, defining who a bona fide purchaser is now. A bona fide purchaser the statement alone, bona fide purchaser, entails in itself several words. Okay. I'll begin with, uh, to begin with, bona fide is a Latin word that uh, literally means good faith, good faith, acting in good faith per se. So when uh, we talk about acting in good faith, we are talking about the genuineness, mm. the honesty, the honesty that someone uh, yeah, that someone brings in in whichever conduct or whichever transaction. Mm -hmm. So now a bona fide purchaser brings in now uh, what we've called now a purchaser. And now for this particular topic and this particular discussion, we shall look at uh, land in particular to be what is purchased or what is bought. So a bona fide purchaser is, uh, in other words, someone who purchases or who buys or who transacts honestly and genuinely also in good faith. Okay. Yes. Th that's a bona fide purchase. And that's now, a bona fide purchase. And now this brings up the clear image and the clear meaning of what we are going to discuss in our today's the discussion in Tekachi. We will always bring so many people to discuss different things that can make you understand how different laws work in Uganda which defense is available, and so, so, so many kinds of that. Now, having understood the bona fide purchaser, there's something else we have also added on the bona fide purchaser, and that is for value. And when you add the value word, so many people may not clearly understand what we mean. Yeah. Because purchases can be done in so many ways. It can be an exchange of one property to an for another, or these money transactions and consideration, that kind. So I want you to make it clear. Having understood the bona fide purchaser, then we now we talk about the value part of it and what it actually means. Uh, so what entails the value uh, is what is given in exchange of whatever is being transacted for. Mm. Legally, we call it consideration. Consideration okay. is the payment or what someone loses to gain something, call it quid pro quo. You must lose something for you to gain something. something. It's something for something. Okay. Now, you find in land transactions, someone has bought a piece of land, and definitely there is a measure on how they are going to, uh, to transact with the former owner. Mm. And that is uh, to say it could be by exchange someone could say, I have my land comprised in this plot and this block, 
comprised and uh, a particular land is maybe in Chad or Wakiso and is saying no I'm desirous of uh, maybe extending and have some having some acres of land in Kachiri so let's extend uh, let's exchange now that is the consideration mm -hmm. now that being the consideration it becomes value for the transaction that has happened between the two so the value carries both the money call it monetary value and there would be other sort of exchange for that particular property okay now we have understood that there is also something else that we have added on to our topical discussion today there is the word notice and i understand but i would want you to make it clear to the viewers out there to understand what we mean when we talk about notice the kinds of notices that are available and then we can continue from that point first. Now, to, to our viewers, notices uh, generally having knowledge mm. or having been informed or having a crew before performing a particular transaction. Okay. Uh, <coughs> for example, assuming you go to town, you go downtown and you want to buy an iPhone and someone tells you, it is iCloud locked, okay. but you can deal with this, mm. something of that sort. So that means they have put to you, uh, they have put to you the fact that it is, meaning whichever transaction, you actually have the notice prior to the transaction. So with or without notice comes in uh, because the, this whole thing of the bona fide purchaser for value with or without notice it comes in as a defense where a transaction has been entered in uh, concerning land and uh, in the end of the transaction something arises. No, but the third party comes to say, no, I had no idea whatever had transpired. I bought in good faith. You cannot take my land. And our laws are there to protect such purchasers, such buyers, because uh, our laws, for example, the Registration of Titles Act, call it the RTA CAP 230, is very clear. Section 59 actually states that the person with the title is, it, it is to the effect that the person with the title is the owner. Hmm, the indefensibility of the title. Exactly. The person holds the title, owns the land. Owns the land. And hmm. it goes ahead under it, it as a Section 176 to actually affirm to quote that whoever has that title, whoever is on the title, mm -hmm. should be free from anyone attacking them, though there is an exception which is fraud. Mm -hmm. So now, with the, the bona fide purchaser for value with or without notice, it comes into play to look at how was the honesty in this? Mm -hmm. Were you aware of the dishonesty that could have transpired before you transacted? Okay. Now it comes to that, and we, we shall look at different notices. We have a uh, constructive notice. We have what we will call maybe actual notice that someone was indeed aware, maybe informed, and they went ahead to perform the transaction, to, to conclude the transaction. Okay. So, so by and large, that is the whole idea, that someone is protecting their interests, saying that, okay, I understand this is happening, but I'm safe where I am because I had no idea whatever transpired before this whole transaction. Mm. Okay, so you talked about the types of notices that are available in this kind of transactions and where the defense can arise. And then you talked about constructive notice. And now I want us to break down the notices and actually what and what is entailed in each kind of notice constructive first then we can go to actual notices and how somebody can actually be taken to have entered the transaction with or without notice uh, now when you talk about constructive notice mm. uh, for our viewers constructive notice is uh, where you where it is presumed that you had something to trigger your mind into maybe finding out more mm. other than just transacting without uh, getting to know much more information. I'll give you a scenario. 
assuming you're transacting land from an administrator of an estate. Now, constructively, it should be in your mind that that estate at least has beneficiaries. Okay. Yes. So it will be proper that you having known that you're dealing with an administrator, something should have triggered your mind to dwell into questioning whether there could be any uh, be any beneficiaries or any other people who could be having interests on the land. Mm. Now that means that should you go ahead and deal with an administrator of an estate where you've not established whether that estate is actually whether that administrator is actually a beneficial a sole beneficial of that estate or whether that administrator sought consent and that consent was given to him maybe to enter that particular transaction it is presumed that no at least constructively something should have triggered your mind into digging deep into finding out the same mm. now that is it how is i can put it off you as for purposes of contra constructive yes that if you uh, reach a point and you want to perform a transaction on land and you find they are a capa and not for sale. <laughs> then you must go ahead and find you, out. You understand? And even the contact is put. <laughs> so yeah. th that should trigger your mind at least to ask, I know this uh, this thing not for sale was was is a bit you know rubbed off by rain and all that, but at least you've seen something that should have triggered your mind. Mm. That is constructive. constructive. So so there must be signs to show you that there is there are questions you need to ask before you can enter that kind of yes uh, ordinarily ordinarily it is something that a layman could see that okay any other person transacting should be, should aware. be aware and maybe they should be inquisitive to they find should out be inquisitive more things to find out. beyond what they are yes, seeing on correct, the ground okay. correct correct now we go to the actual notices now actual notices is uh, where you enter into a transaction, mm. but you actually have knowledge of it. You, you have knowledge of maybe any encumbrances <laughs> or any third party claims or any other interests. Mm. Now, when we talk of actual notice, is whereby a purchaser enters into a transaction, but mm. they have an idea that, okay, there is some fraud somewhere. Mm. But of course, you know, with our country, as you forgive us, people want to take advantage of every situation whereby once someone is aware that, okay, there is some bit of fraud here. If mm. this land is worth 200M, if I give this guy 120M, then I will take the property. I'll take the property. Mm. You know, most of them use the Uganda word. Shall find our way. To judge Sambao. Good quarter cities, you understand. You know, they and, have found And mostly it happens whereby someone sits and Navalamu family. Mm. Then they know, okay, in this family, there is a likelihood that no one will rise against me. Yes. And they yeah. want to take that advantage. Exactly. So that means that you had actual knowledge that there was something. Of everything that was happening and everything that was transpiring. But you weren't interested but in finding out more. No, you actually knew. You actually knew, but you <laughs> went ahead. And entered into that transaction. And entered into that transaction mm. for reasons well known to you. <laughs> okay. And that is why court has set its position that once it is established that you had knowledge of any other interests, and particularly you participated in fraud, you're not protected. That defense will not the help you. Will not suffice it, it will not suffice to help you. It will not save you. Mm. But people say, okay, I know I'll, I'll vote, but I, I'll change the title from my name to my son's name, then we can play it around. <laughs> Once it is pro pro proved before court that you actually participated in the fraud, mm. that is it. Because it is taken that you actually had the actual notice. Actual you had knowledge. knowledge. About of whatever, whatever that was transpired before you entered into that before transaction. Before you entered into that particular transaction. Yeah, and our viewers on that point, they should know that once it is brought to the knowledge of court that there was fraud in any transaction that transpired, then court has the powers to make orders to the cancellation of your name of, on that title. 
<laughs> that, that is the only exception <laughs> under section 176. 176. Fraud. Where fraud is established, then court has the powers to order the cancellation. Yes, the because uh, our, uh, our viewers, our laws are clear under the Registration of Titles Act. In fact, section 64 of the Registration of Titles Act talks about notice. That mm. should you be aware and you go ahead. Now, it, it works now with the other exception under section 174 that if you go ahead and participate in fraud, which is the exception that if you have a title, you actually protected that no one should enter your land, no one should do whatever, and court should protect you. Then other people should deal with themselves, uh, give it, uh, uh, say it be compensation, payment for damages outside when you're protected. Mm. But where you participated in fraud, you expect no protection whatsoever. That's so important to note our viewers. And on this same actual notice, we have had instances where there is a certificate of title on a particular land. Correct. And people want, to, so many people, I should say, the lay people don't understand, you know, some of the security features that are on a certificate of, of title. title yes. You get it? Yes. And people always bring their photocopies and hand them to their clients and say, hey, chapa chavi chichino. signing our no to marry is a deal. And when such instances arise, and maybe this person, the purchaser, was given a fake because of their quality, um, <laughs> I don't know whether to call it an Asaron title. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <laughs> because yeah, that yes. word has been used several times. You can call it that way, but because <laughs> they have no knowledge about the features that must be on the title to verify it and mm -hmm. see its originality, mm -hmm. they go ahead and enter into such kind of a purchase. Are they protected under this defense of a bona fide purchase of a Now, there there is, I will say there is no protection per se, mm. save if we go under the Illiterates Act okay. and they presume that they didn't know whatever no, they answered. Some of them are not illiterate. However, mm. however, the law requires that for you to purchase, to enter into a transaction, in fact, you should do what we call due diligence. Due diligence yes. Now, with due diligence, we have Minister of Lands right uh, uh, at Parliamentary Avenue. Mm. We have several uh, MZO offices, yes. Ministry Zone offices. Zone offices, yes. In different places. We have at URSB, we have a department. So all those are there to, 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 to help someone that, okay, someone has presented to you a title. No, don't rush into payment. Make a search. Find out. Find out. Mm. Do something about it. Find out. Get some information. In fact, court has even come out to pronounce it so. To, to, to describe to everyone what should be entailed in due diligence that, okay, you've appreciated the fact that this title is in this person's name. Mm. Have you gone ahead to establish whether the person, because people have similar names, even when you get a certificate, uh, a such certificate, Mm. Uh, uh, such report from uh, Minister of Lands, of Lands. they, they will put for your note that it is up to <laughs> ascertain whether the person on the title is the person you're dealing they with. They actually always <laughs> put a statement that this finding is not the final, but you can yes. go ahead and Correct. establish it, it gives the clear you a facts. It gives you a go ahead. Uh. Now, when such a scenario happens, Court has seen several fraudsters come in. Some people have similar names. Some people make, of course, after making the title, they can go ahead and make, and make the national, the national IDs ID to show that, okay, I'm the person. Then before you know they will sign for you the transfer <laughs> forms, then the transfer forms will be a mismatch with the information on the system and everything when that information is being entered. Mm. So court has pronounced itself under due diligence what a person should do. You can Our viewers, what you down. can do to purchase something and you're contented that, okay, if anything happens, I I've played my detected. part and I'm defended that maybe if there were any third party claims or any other interests, I am protected by what we are discussing today. Mm. Now, such include actually finding out from the local council chairperson. Okay. You know, reach on the ground, visit, find out is this actually the owner of the land? 
but uh, we've had scenarios where people come here to Kampala, meet lawyers, make agreements. <laughs> and they go back home. And assume I've purchased. Then before you know he reaches home, <laughs> and what is on the ground? Scotters. Yeah, and so that, that has happened in so many cases. It has happened in so many cases. You find someone is struggling, he, the, 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 the agreement actually is the place that the, the, the sailor will give free <laughs> back. <laughs> we, we give a free land, mm. free from uh, squatters and all that. So Position you need to free do, from any third party co claims. Correct. Mm. So you need to do due diligence for you to purchase something that you yourself has ascertained very well that any, if in case there was any fraud or anything that happened behind scenes, it wasn't in, to your knowledge, mm. such that you get protected. And uh, one thing that uh, one has to do for them to succeed under bona fide purchase for value without notice, if they are claiming that defense for them to walk away free, is uh, the first the title should be in your names. Because you already stated that uh, our laws clearly protect someone protect on the somebody title. who is registered on the title. Yes. Mm -hmm. Another thing is you should be getting correct information from your agents. Okay. Because that notice is uh, a notice to your agent is, uh, is, is taken to, to be principal. a notice to you. Mm. The principal you have sent the, 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 the agent. Agents are brokers. Mm. Our viewers, you send a broker. <laughs> then on David Akataka, the business, and my Then he will go there because he knows he has there some one commission. million commission. They will tell him, No, this land is owned by two people, but only one is selling. And he's a way of fraud, but he says, Ah, Katiwano no kuita wo, Mfunaka Kadako. And in the end, you want to plead bona fide purchase of a value without notice. But when your agent was actually aware, aware of, of the fraud that was, was happening behind you. Correct. Okay. We have had notices where, in, in these terms, I, I, I brought the one on titles and people who don't want to know about what titles mean. Mm -hmm. And you have been able to highlight the due diligence that is needed in right. land transactions. Correct. And there is an important issue of heresies. Yes, correct. And I want you to make it clear to the viewers out there. Where land is registered under the RTA and the person, the owner, has a land title, correct. do we still need the intervention of the ROCs? Like to the viewers out there. Now, to the viewers, you see, uh, day in, day out, mm. uh, the land division gets congested with parties conflicting on and over land. That's mm. why I've said that court has come in to pronounce itself day in, day out. That, okay, at least as part of due diligence, I was reading some report where court has attained that, okay, we agree that uh, you have a good title, but at least for someone to purchase, find out from the local council chairperson, because someone can actually sell their, in their interests, they can mortgage their interests, Mm. And once can there lease. is a mortgage, they can lease. And once there is a mortgage, of course, even if we bring in uh, the principles of equity to come into play, they will not save you because one of the principles of equity is that who come, uh, uh, he who comes to he who comes must, come equity with clean must come with clean hands. Now you come with, <laughs> with your dirty hands. <laughs> hands and you want equity to help you. <laughs> exactly. And also the first in equity prevails. Yeah. Okay. So the first transaction that you did not inquire from the LC might prevail to your detriment. Okay. So that is why you need to go there. Uh, sometime back I was seeing uh, a, a, a meme on, on, on WhatsApp making grounds that as part of due diligence, you need to find out one from the local council chairperson also after certaining the title, <laughs> then also you need to go ahead <laughs> and, and talk to that drunkard, <laughs> that drunkard in the village, because they are the people who know the information. <laughs> Why? Because like I, started, uh, like I stated when we were starting, day in, day out, the value of land appreciates. Mm. And without mm -hmm. land, you have almost nothing, if I may call it, save for stocks and shares and all that, but we, we have 
grown up in a society where it is seen as something, as a symbol of maybe success. So because of that, you find that you need to establish the more the value, the higher the rate of fraud stars. So if you say, okay, I've based on the title, I think that is all. Mm. That is where now our constructive notice will come in. That okay, did you dig deep into maybe the transaction that you wanted to do? Did you find out why Abada mm. you, you understand? Yeah. You tell someone, let me first make a search of the registry. <laughs> I have other buyers, they on standby, they want to take this property, you know, it's prime land and all that and all that. So you understand? Now that is where constructive notice comes in, that mm. you should at least ascertain, ascertain a few things. A few things. Mm. I have or seen. maybe after the transaction, maybe after the transaction, normally in those agreements we make, we put that the that the seller introduces the purchaser to the local council authority. But mm. rarely do people do that. Uh, it stops sure. in the agreement. Mm. Very few do that. Do people even read the agreements that we make for them? They do read. <laughs> <laughs> some of them don't <laughs> those, read. those are their contents. Uh, and maybe they don't know what some statements in the agreement. Uh, exactly. No, they, they, take, possession. They, they take things light. <laughs> they take things light. Introduction to the local light. councils. So you, you go to the village, and even the local council chairperson is not aware of any transaction to have taken place between the two, but then you're running there to, chase, to chase quarters off the land. Mm. Yet he's not even aware you're the new owner. Mm. Correct. Oh, there, there is a question here, I think, before we can proceed. Okay. Uh, now Kenya Brenda says, keep up the good work. Thank you for watching. Then Rita says, is there anyone who purchases land in bad faith? Yes. Bona fide purchase. That one, uh, <laughs> the opposite of bona fide to our viewers is called malafide. malafide. So that is called malafide purchase. So <laughs> the malafide purchase, like I said, is people take advantage of the existing fraud. Mm. People take advantage of the existing fraud. I'll give you a scenario. Someone uh, could lose their grandfather, then they go obtain letters of administration fraudulently. Yes. Now you will find that if you dig deep, the person who funded the process of obtaining letters of administration Is has the actually the person who purchased <laughs> the, <laughs> the land. <laughs> who purchased the land, the subject matter. And that is acting malafide. That's buying in good mm -hmm. faith. That okay, you knew this person was not maybe the sole beneficiary or even had no right over the property, but because they got the letters of administration, somehow accessed the title from their grandparent, went and did the transfers and all that, it's now in their names. Now you switch it to your names and you want the to be other able. sections to come and protect you. As a bona fide purchaser. As a bona fide purchaser, no. Mm. There, you are a bona fide purchaser. You purchased, <laughs> you purchased in, bad, in faith. bad faith. You knew that some things were not right in, in fact, the purchase of land. In fact, you had a hand in the fraud. In the fraud, yeah, that transpired before you bought land. Okay. You had all the information available to show that there is something not right in the land that you are trying to purchase, but you went ahead and purchased. In fact, you're even the planner wa of the move. move. And in such circumstances, you'll find maybe some good acres of land whose value should be like 700 million, someone has bought at 150. I know the court does not, our court doesn't look at, uh, at the bargain. Mm. It is a clearly stated principle. Court doesn't look at what you agreed. What it looks at is, has the consideration been paid in full? Mm. If it has been paid in full, has the person, got, uh, has the person been given the subject matter for which the consideration was paid, and that's all. But once you dig deep, you find that such bad faith came into play. That dishonesty came into play. Mm. I, I hope that answers our viewers' question. Yes, that is purchasing property in bad faith or Correct. modified purchases. Yes. Yes. Then Prince Ronald Ora said, good job, council, continue to bring 
many cities into the light. Thank you so much for always following and watching our shows. And this show always happens every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to midday. And we bring so many things, different guests, different topics. And as I've always told you, if you have any kind of topic you feel we should talk about in the next session, you feel free to inbox the Alternative Uganda Facebook pages. You can find us on Twitter at the Alternative Yuga. Come to my inbox personally at Tumsime Kato on Twitter and Tumsime Kato on Facebook. You, I'll be able to go through the comments and we shall be able to address your issues as they come in. <coughs> now, uh, we, we, we can go back now because I see the questions are now over. <coughs> on the issue... Maybe oh. uh, one, uh, one thing I wish to also bring the attention of our viewers yes. is that uh, there is we, we talked so much about purchase. Purchase, yes. And uh, our viewers should know that that particular that, that defense, bona fide purchase of a value without notice, excludes people who inherit. Yes, that's what I wanted to. That's why I wanted to take you, <laughs> but you can tackle it. <laughs> All right, since <laughs> so, since uh, I felt it is important <laughs> for our viewers to also know, you find someone uh, because okay, we, we don't want to lose our beloved ones, but someone lost their beloved, and they have gone through the process of obtaining the letters of administration. Now, once they get the letters of administration, if uh, prior to the letters of administration, or even after, mm. the land had some encumbrances, or the land had some third party interests. Mm. Such <coughs> a person, such a heir, cannot go to court and seek to be protected by the principle, the of bona principle fide purchase. by the defense of bona fide purchase of a value without notice. In any case, you're not a purchaser. We mm. say sorry to you. <laughs> that uh, the property is not yours, but, and there was maybe some fraudulent dealing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't save people who get that and uh, gifts in survivors. Okay. So, so for you to be saved by the defense of bona fide purchase of value, you must have purchased land. You must have and paid purchased, value yes, and for purchased that property. And purchase includes consideration, and which consideration is, includes value can be monetary value or any other kind can of be value. Exchange. It can be the, exchange, but there must be that kind of value. There is a, a certain case I, I read some time back and a transaction was done on land and the value was a marriage that was yet to be. Okay. And court <laughs> upheld that that was that its was value. value. Yes. So the, the value of that property. So the value differs from the interest of the purchase, the, the purchaser, the and the, and then the vendor. Correct. But but as long as court ascertained that there was value and there was a but transaction. But such values should be uh, on future prospects, yeah, okay. not the past. <laughs> not the past exactly. Yes. So if you want to be saved by that defense, then you must have entered into a purchase. And then a consideration must have been made at some point in time. And that must be for value. That's why you can be saved. Like he said, the, the, the people who inherit the property, the people who are gifted the property, cannot be saved by the principal as long as there is no purchase and for value. Now, council, as we, I see time is not on our, on our side, but I want us to tackle this. Where a person purchases this property, there was very consideration. Mm -hmm. And then when, when the matter is brought before court, court establishes that there was notice before that kind of purchase. Do we have any remedies for such purchasers and the vendors? What happens in such an instance? Now, where it is established that actually the purchase had notice mm -hmm. and court dictates that no, given the facts before us, Maybe the vendor put to your notice that maybe some there was a subsisting, you know, whether there was transaction, a subsisting maybe. transaction, there was a subsisting dealing. Uh, like I discussed, it is taken that you had knowledge. Mm. So once court has positioned itself that, okay, you had notice, you were aware that this wasn't the vendor's property. Mm. 
Okay. Now, court will not come in to save you. Mm. In fact, they will declare the party that has brought the matter before court to be the owner mm. of the property. Okay. And even order the commissioner and registration to issue a title in that person's, that name. person's name. Because while you are aware, you went ahead to purchase. That makes you a party to fraud, which is the exception mm. to the protection. Okay. Maybe a uh, court cannot compel you. A uh, court cannot compel the vendor to refund the money to you because mm -hmm. it's it's all. <laughs> but it can give guidelines. Okay. It can give guide gui guidelines. And in any case, now it is up to you two people to sort yourselves. Mm. You were so much aware that uh, I was running an, an estate where I wasn't even a beneficiary. <laughs> you came and purchased, even in your knowledge, that you knew that I wasn't the owner. Mm. So court says, no, for the ends of justice to meet, let the beneficiaries take the estate. The estate, then you can... Now, now that two of you, <laughs> wherever you met and discussed whichever transaction you can go you back and in, discuss the same. You can go back and discuss the same. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. And, and where, that's the end of the story. And where it is established that the purchase happened without, value, without notice. Now, where it is established that uh, the purchase, uh, the, 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 the transaction happened without notice, in other words, you are not aware of not any aware illegal of any transactions. Court protects survival. you. Mm. Court protects you. So uh, it is now between the vendor and the other person claiming the interests for the other past transaction. Mm. Because one thing that has to be ascertained is, for example, the fact that the consideration was paid in full. Mm -hmm. So give a scenario um, where the consideration was not paid in full, then the vendor went ahead to, to sell the property to another person. Mm. And the person pays in full, goes ahead, obtains the title. the title. Now, the other first person who had, you know, the other first person who had paid some money comes in to claim interest, say, no, this is my land. How are you even using it and all that? <laughs> And maybe prior to purchasing that property, the purchaser was not notified. The person with the title was not even aware of any transaction between these two. No court will dictate that uh, you have your title, go enjoy your land free from any noise, free from any person complaining. Now let these two go and sort themselves. They either, uh, the vendor either refunds the money to the other first person to the other first party with some interest, according to how they were ugly, uh, mm. they, they were ugly. <coughs> Though, like I stated, court will not compel the other party to refund, to save refund for some money. circumstances, where you find maybe a lease is involved and this and the other. You find court is g g giving its orders that maybe this person recovers their money from this other vendor. Okay, that's so good, Dan, and thank you so much for elaborating more about that. And uh, as we are almost coming near to the close of the show, there is this one important thing that I want you to also clarify, and I felt it is important as well. In, 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 in the notices that we talked about, and this is in regard to the actual notices given to the vendors, mm -hmm. some are given written notices. Correct. Some uh, go and find out from the locals, like you said. Some find out from the uh, brokers and the rest. And does the law specify the kind of notices that qualify, whether constructive or actual, to say that this person purchased land, yes, for value, but there was no notice or there was notice? Uh, are there any specifications that must be included in that kind of notice? Now, I'll give you first a scenario hmm. where you find the subject matter, the land, the piece of land that the people, uh, the, the two intend to transact on, already has issues and maybe the matter is in court. Hmm. But because someone intends to put up a petrol station there and it is prime land, says no, I'll pay you. <laughs> 
as we know I, 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 I know court will decide. Okay. So the court cannot dictate that, okay, that note should have been put in writing and given to him that, you understand, in mm. fact, you had actual knowledge of whatever was transpiring. Inspired. And you went ahead now, assuming court rules in the favor of the party that you didn't purchase from. You can't say, no, I bought this and, and the other. You mm. can't plead that. Now, coming to, to your question again, you, I, I, I want to bring it to our viewers that there is no particular, you know, particular requirement for notices. Mm -hmm. Let it be, uh, le let's say it should be written or whatever. No. It all comes back to the due diligence we talked about, that an individual should be much aware that an individual should be much aware that I need to find out information concerning this particular property before I put my hand in the pocket and uh, cash in to conclude the transaction. Mm. So if you do due diligence, now the information you find out, because court will ask, for example, before purchasing this land, what transpired? Okay, then someone start narrating, I visited the local council chairperson, he assured me this was <laughs> his land, I did this. And that is the notice. Mm. You find for you when you visited, the notice that was put to you was, you were notified, you were notified by, by the by local council chairperson that this land is actually for the vendor. Or even the relatives. Or even the relatives. Told you, don't buy this land. <laughs> don't buy the this land. Are so the beneficiaries are so many and they are not interested in selling. And we are not interested in the selling. But because he has letters of administration, is, or maybe you even want to purchase land, you find there a caveat. Mm. Then you remove a caveat through whichever way. <laughs> and mm. now, constructively, that should have triggered your mind to inquire from you know, f f f from whoever caveated mm. whatever reason as to why they, they did the caveating. Mm. So in instances, in such instances, it is up to the purchaser to find more. In such and instances, as long as it is proved that you are put to notice. In whichever form. In whichever form. Let it be constructive, let it be actual, let, let it be, be by through your, mouth, your agents, let it be, let it be correct. You, as long as God ascertains that there was any piece of notice. There was notice. It, it should have, that you had any knowledge of whatever was transpiring before mm. transacting. Mm. You cannot be saved by the defense. You cannot be saved by the defense. Okay. Because uh, it will directly take you to be part of to the be fraud. To be part of the fraud. <laughs> which <laughs> is the only exception. And we talked about where court ascertains fraud. Then it has all the powers to order for the cancellation of your name on the title. Correct. Mm. And uh, in such cases, who takes the property now? Does it go back in instances where it is part of an estate of the deceased? In, and in such a case, it will go back to other beneficiaries. It will go back to the beneficiaries, Correct. and then the purchaser will lose the property at that point. We'll sort himself with the vendor. <laughs> with the person who sold <laughs> to him. Correct. And there's something also I wanted you to, 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 to clarify, where you talked about payment of the full purchase price for you yes. to be saved by the defense. Yes. And in instances where a court case or a cause of action is brought against you as a purchaser of the piece of land and maybe you have paid for example seventy percent of the purchase price. Uh, doesn't this defense also come to your favor and save you? Because when I was starting, I said uh, for one to be saved by a bona fide <coughs> purchase, for, for that defense, mm -hmm. that person should be in possession of title. Yes. In, but the in, instance in, is cancelled. In, in the transactions I've seen, <laughs> I've not seen someone issue transfer forms when they are still <laughs> demanding 30% of the money. But there are instances cancelled that I want you to know that a person, a vendor and the purchaser agrees that when I pay 80% of the purchase price, then I can take vacant possession as I pay the rest of the money. And the title? No, no, no. We, the title is different from taking vacant possession. Here, this yes. person, he will take in the scenario that I'm giving you, we presume that I have paid 80% of the purchase price 
and vacant possession has been given to me, so I am at liberty to use my land in whichever way I want to use it. And then a cause of action comes claiming, and I want to be saved by the bona fide purchase of the, the defense for value, for value without, without notice. notice. And you have not completed, have not completed. the payments. Mm. Now, I, I, I will want Does to, ascertain, save me I, I want to ascertain one thing from you. Mm. Do you have a title? Not yet. I don't have a title. But I'm in possession. And now, I am a purchaser. Without a title, that defense doesn't come anywhere, in fact. Okay. Because you must have a title to show that you're actually in possession. Because, like I said, under our Registration of Titles Act Cap 230, mm. Section 59 protects someone with a title, and so does Section 176. So, in short, to our viewers, should we tell them that, where, that the bona fide purchaser for value without notice cannot save the Vibanja uh, purchasers? Now, that one, mm. you see... Uh, That's what I want us to bring in and, and, and to clear. Okay, now, in, in line with that, you said after payment of 80%, mm. you're in possession, then a third party comes. Comes and then they now, bring their claim. A third, if a third party comes, and in the circumstances they have paid full consideration, mm. we go back now to the interpretation of the agreement you people made. Because several people put different terms in the agreement that, yeah, okay, that's okay, I'm going to pay <coughs> this amount, I enter into possession, then they also put, should there be default? Mm. Maybe we shall resort to court, maybe you shall leave the land, I refund you, mm. we shall resort to ADR, we shall resort to this and the other. So the terms that are put in the agreement come into play. Come into play and then they, they come into play. Mm. That's one. In the circumstance that someone is a uh, a Chibanja holder who paid and all that. Now that is the other due diligence that if you're purchasing Chibanja, establish who the landlord is. Because the law requires a, a Chibanja holder to, to seek consent from the landlord should they want to develop, the, yeah. should they want to transfer, <laughs> they want should to they sell. want to sell their interest in mm. the Chibanja. They must consult. And, and they yeah. must con consult and, and, get, consent and, from, and get consent from and seek consent from the landlord because in any case the landlord could want to, to buy the interests mm. back to himself. Okay. So now, over there we shall, uh, we shall look at now what transpired. So you'll find that in such circumstances there will be no conflict. The first question will be, why did you meet the landlord? <laughs> is he aware that this transaction happened no, because he's the one with the title? Is he aware that there was such and such a transaction? Okay, he's not aware that you're the new tenant. Whom does the landlord know? Mm -hmm. So we shall take that the person known to the landlord is actually, <laughs> the, actually the owner, owner of, the, of the interest the in that land. Correct. Thank you so much, Council. And in about two, three minutes, I would give you an opportunity to give your final remarks, maybe the comments that you think our viewers should know as we come to close of this show. Now, uh, to our viewers, uh, I'll, I'll say that it is important for you to enter into any transaction to first do what we explain, that is the due diligence. Mm. We jokingly said also inquiring from some drunkard near where that land you intend to purchase is <laughs> also now doing all those searches and all that then another thing is under try to understand the terms that are put in the agreements of sale the agreements that you execute by appending your hands try to understand the contents because sometimes we faced uh, we are faced with scenarios where people just sign you find uh, someone has 10 acres they were selling to, but they didn't specify the acreage. Now somewhere someone is claiming they bought five acres, mm -hmm. but in actual sense they had paid for two acres. So there, there is need for that vigilance by both the purchasers and the vendors that you should understand the terms that are put in the agreements that you enter into. That is key. Then another key aspect is should you find out that there is 
should you be put to notice that there is something maybe behind scenes that you aren't aware of and now you've come to be aware maybe there are other interests first go slow on the purchase because day in day out people are selling properties people are selling land people are selling square miles and square miles so land is still there mm. you will rush <coughs> into purchasing what is there well knowing there are some encumbrances and uh, some misunderstandings concerning that particular property then you end up pulling ropes and uh, attending court every day <laughs> because you 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 chose to rush even when you had an idea that there, there was a conflict on the property so it is important that our viewers are careful whenever they find out that there is actually a conflict on the property they intend to purchase and 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 uh, execute agreements and whichever deeds then maybe lastly to, to our viewers to our viewers is keep your titles safe keep those agreements safe because fraudsters increase day in and day out so we must be careful of who we transact with and now this is the time to also find out more information go past the due diligence now dig much deep before acquiring property especially within the kampala metropolitan area where the, uh, the, f uh, the fraudulent acts are so rampant. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I appreciate the viewing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council, for sparing your time and sharing with our viewers. And I hope this show has been so interactive, it has been knowledgeable, and in one way or the other, everybody has picked a piece. Don't feel free to share the same link share the same video with your friends so that they can also learn what you have also learned. Uh, as alternative DigiTalk, we shall continue and always continue to bring so many people to teach you and keep you informed in different aspects of life so that we can also create and make an importance and maybe add some value in our day-to-day -day lives in this country. And I am Katotu Msime, your host today for Tekachi. Feel free to always comment, send your questions, send your inquiries uh, through alternative DigiTalk, Facebook pages, Twitter, or the personal accounts at Tumsime Kato at, at Facebook, tums, at Tumsime Kato on Twitter. Just hit my inbox and I will be freely uh, and able to answer what you have asked. And I cannot thank you enough for watching and following the show the people have worked with thank you so much and keep it up and uh, we shall see you next tuesday for the same show from 11 to midday have a lovely afternoon and, and god bless you Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.